guys, what's up? Um, I've, in this video, I kind of want to go over how I've decided to change how I actually go about teaching electronics. Uh, previously, teaching electronics, is, while not a big deal, um, it never really took hold for my students from what I found uh, because we always got bogged down in the numbers. Traditionally, you start learning electronics by going through Ohm's Law and you do all the math and stuff, and then you actually get to start building circuits and see how everything functions. And what I really think is that's completely and utterly backwards. What I really want to do is be able to have my students understand the fundamentals of how circuits work, why they work the way they do, and then we can apply the math. And hopefully when we do that, they'll be able to understand how the connection between math and the theory work together. Because in my experience, doing the math and then trying to connect the theory in later, um, or the actual physical action, doesn't work. Uh, and for this, I've chosen Minecraft um, to kind of be the bridge to help teach the idea uh, to get there. So we're going to go through, and uh, I've recorded my screen at school. I'm uh, taking this video here at home. Uh, and then we'll kind of put them together, and I'll walk through kind of the setup that I've done here. So when we jump into our world, uh, we have this uh, kind of landing area. There's different areas for my classes. Uh, these My kids have built all this stuff for me. Uh, so they go in, there's this uh, giant big meeting room, and I'm still having issues with my push plates. Uh, but they go in, there's a big area there, and generally what I have is my students go up onto the uh, kind of white seating that we're going up on now. And then uh, I kind of can give them instruction as a class there. There can be information. I can also break them up in groups there. Uh, once they have their assignment, they'll head back out of those doors. They'll go to their class. In this case, it's my 7th grade class. So it's just my CAD class. And they'll come to this TARDIS-looking thing. Uh, which is actually a hidden little transport, and I'll send them to this other world. And when they turn around, they're presented with a giant battery. Uh, the basic premise here is that they're going to be electrons in a battery, and they have to go through a circuit just like an electron would. Now I'm going to fly up over the battery to talk about uh, some of the stuff going on behind the scenes that the kids won't actually see. Uh, in the background here, I have right now four different kind of circuits that they can go through. I have series, parallel, I have a series circuit that has resistors on it, and then I also have a series circuit that has a whole bunch of, uh, or should I say a wider path. Um, so I can go through and the students can complete that, and I also have little switches that I can use to control the doors. So the students can actually pop open a door, um, or I can choose to pop open a door and have them flow through. Um, the really nice thing about this too is that when they're going through the circuits, there's options on there for them to kind of get hung up and to see what happens to the electrons or what happens to the circuit when things break. Uh, so let's go inside the battery here. Um, you can see it's pretty massive. My kids did a fantastic job with that. Uh, I'm going to focus on the two doors on the left hand side here. One is for series and another door is for parallel circuits because they're the most two basic type of circuits. Uh, so we'll go in here, we're going to start off with a series, and uh, we're going to run through the whole series circuit. Uh, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of choice. The students have to go through, uh, just like an electron would in a series circuit, they have to follow through and go on that straight path. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's the only choice they have. Um, I, I try to have them race through it as fast as possible. And on later versions of this, I'm going to put in some doors um, that I can activate by switches where I can close the door and then they won't be able to continue their path, simulating a switch or a broken wire or something along those lines. Um, and then once I get through all this, they'll go back and they enter back into the battery, um, kind of completing the circuit like a normal electron would. Um, so I'm going to run over here and now we're going to go over to the other end. I actually fly. Uh, but we're going to go over to the first door, uh, which is for a parallel circuit. Uh, so we'll bust through that, we'll go through, and again, I have control as a teacher to open and close those doors remotely. The students can't bust through them. Um, but here on a parallel circuit, they're going through, and all of a sudden they have a choice. They can go left or they can go right. Either one's fine, but they have a choice of which way to go through. Um, and then they're continued through, and they can keep running through, and they're going to get presented with some more choices. This one happens to have four different choices. Um, so I'm going to pick the one all the way on the right here and run down it, and uh-oh, my path is blocked. As an electron, I can't flow through that one anymore because it's blocked. So let's try this one. O okay, that one's blocked too, but it's not as high a, a problem and I can get over it, and then I can continue on my path. So the whole point of this is to show students that they have the ability in a parallel circuit that if a path is blocked, they can continue through another way. Uh, and then we're going to start connecting this back to the math here. But I really want them to get the idea that the electrons can go through and do everything. Um, and I also have this little hut in here that they can go into that will take them back to our original meeting place, which is awesome. 
Uh, but that's kind of how I'm going through and starting to teach electronics to my class this year. Uh, it, it's a different way of doing it, but I'm excited about it because it, it's different. My students love Minecraft and taking real kind of physical ideas, even though it's computer world, it's a physical world to them. Um, and I can go through and really create a, a realistic sensation of what it's like to be an electron. And hopefully I'm, I want that knowledge and idea to transfer over to what we're doing in class. Uh, once we get to the math, once we get to building the real circuits. But right now I'm focused on just building the idea of how this works. And then I can go back and construct and build everything from there. Um, but that's kind of my thoughts. Uh, if you have any th extra thoughts or have suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, but until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.